I'm Matthew Bond. Society may call me a junkie, a criminal, or a drug user, but in reality, I'm just Matthew Bond. My mom and my dad were never together. Um, it's kind of I'm a one night stand, and they. I just remember them fighting over me a lot. I was juggled around a lot, like, you know, oh, go spend some time with your dad or spend some time with your mom. So I, I kind of just felt like, you know, I never fit in, even in my family life. And I just was never really comfortable in my own skin. So when I found something that made me comfortable in my own skin, I used it, and I used it a lot. And I took it and it just, you know, it took all those emotions away, it took all my anxiety away. I felt like the person that I was meant to be on these, on these pills and uh, changed my life, uh, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. Yo, I'm here. Talk soon. I took, you know, ecstasy and Valium pretty much throughout my whole high school years. First time I used ecstasy, I was at a party, and not just be like, I'd be talking and going on, telling jokes, and then I'd throw up, and then go right back to talking. It's like I, I didn't even realize that I was throwing up like the next week at school, because like, I was on a weekend, and uh, this girl I knew who was older than me, she just like, I don't know, she freaked out at me in front of everybody because she knew she heard I was on ecstasy at this party and she, she didn't want me to use drugs. But you know, like that was one of the most alive, uh, one of the most like times I felt the most alive. I am certainly dependent on drugs and I'm not ashamed of it. I've been on methadone for like, I don't know, a long time, too long, probably 10 years. The bang. Methadone is an opioid agonist therapy, and it's uh, it's for people that have opioid use disorders, or people that have been depending on opioids in one capacity or another. Um, it takes away their withdrawal, blocks your your receptors, uh, so you can't get high. Like if I was to go and inject opioids, I wouldn't get high. Um, so it's like a, a treatment, I guess, for people on opioids. Using drugs definitely is probably my, my top hobby, but you know, I, I, I really like trying to be creative. I like, you know, photography. I like reading books. Um, I like playing basketball or baseball, uh, hanging out with my little brother. See, man. I'm glad we've been hanging around. I don't have too many close friends around here. You know, Tommy and Tommy and Lindsay are definitely two of the top ones. So any. Any time I get to spend with them, it's uh, certainly um, a pleasure. This is a good one too. Huh? Is it this one's new? I haven't seen that one though. This is like the dream team. Uh, we first met at a documentary film screening for a harm reduction film on Mainline Needle Exchange, and um, around that time, there was people meeting and discussing advocating for a safe injection site locally 
and I was interested in that and trying to become a part of those conversations and it turns out Matt was also interested in that and trying to become part of those conversations. So we continued to work together organizing the overdose prevention site and then started doing all this research together and then along the way just became good friends but I feel like that was kind of going to happen from the beginning because we just kind of hit it off right away. He used to call me big little bro because he always said I was right wise. Yeah. So I was big little bro and he was little big bro. That's one thing he taught me is like uh, people who are trying to make laws will say, you know, what's the difference, you know, you, you can use this much, you can use that much, but we'll just arrest people who are selling it. Exactly. You're explaining a community where you can't really people who are using or people who are selling and people who are sharing and just getting by and it's like obviously a little more complicated than the laws make it out to be. That in particular has really challenged me to unlearn some of the previous things I learned and open my eyes to new ways of, of framing substance use around human rights and dignity. We know the, the side effects of them, we know the benefits, we know the harms, and when we know that, then we can outweigh it, outweigh the risks and the harms. And as long as we know a quantity and a quality of a dose, then people can use safely. That's what Matt and I work so hard on here all the time, is making sure that people are seen as people first. And then we can talk about all the other social determinants of health afterwards, because the drugs aren't what's hurting people, it's, it's all of those other things that are I overdosed uh, in July of 2020, but you know, I think I was feeling a lot of, um, you know, just emotional dis distraught, right? Like I was, I was, I was not myself. I wanted to escape. I bought a hundred Xanax, and I got a good deal. And you know, I always joke around and say, you know, I can never say no to a good deal. I wanted to just like unwind hang out with some friends, and then I started using a lot of cocaine. And, and then I finally met someone who was selling fentanyl, and I didn't use it right away, I just kind of put it, you know, put it aside. I was up for three nights. You know, typically I would have waited until I got home and used that fentanyl and went to sleep. And I had multiple vials of naloxone, I had nasal naloxone. Um, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to use it here before I go home. So I used, I, I sniffed three lines of uh, blue fentanyl, blue smurf. It was the nickname of this fentanyl. And, but I thought something bad was gonna happen, but I thought it was like we were gonna get busted. The first two lines didn't really do much. I, the third one was like, a, you know, just hit me all at once. I got a hot spot, but I was sniffing it, practicing harm reduction. I wasn't injecting it. the bathroom, I washed my hands uh, and my face and that's the last I remember. The, 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 the people I was, I was with gave me two vials of naloxone, nothing happened, they called 911. I'm sorry for all the people who have overdosed and didn't make it, all the friends that I have known, all the you know, all the colleagues, all the family members, all the friends, all the uh, community members, you know, it shouldn't have happened and it wasn't your fault and we love you. I thought so many times over and over, like why did, why did, why was I revived? I knew I wasn't gonna stop using drugs, so I was born this way and I love who I am today and I'm not going to change it for nobody. I'm proud to be someone who uses drugs and I'm proud to be who I am today. And I probably won't be alive when I'm 70. It really, really depends. Matt's just like uh, one of the most creative people I've ever met. Um, his brain's always going like a mile a minute and it's always like so thoughtful, so passionate. Um, he hustles like nobody I've ever met. Uh, one thing Matt and his colleagues in Kaput have helped me to unlearn and relearn and always be thinking about is that people who use drugs are experts in their own life. And so if somebody's not wanting treatment, 
that's okay. If somebody wants to use a little less, that's okay. People use drugs for lots of different reasons. My dad always says, like, you've been doing drugs for, what, 10 years? Well, you're 10 years behind, so just start now and, and move forward. We have the right to life, liberty, and security, and that should include the pursuit of happiness, and that may include using drugs. Mm -hmm.